Good morning, world, and a very special good morning to our new fans in South Austin there, uh, Blair and Kathy. Uh, uh, the Atheist community of Austin is proud to bring you the show all the atheists have been talking about, The Atheist Experience, with our very special guest today, Arlo Pignati, the man behind the sound effects. Our, and then we also have Martin Wagner to give us the views and comments on the national news. And then we go on to our host, Jeff D. Thanks, Ray. Morning, everyone. Hi. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. Uh, this show is brought to you by the Atheist Community of Austin, which is a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We are live May 7, 2000 <laughs> CE. Ray, you've got me saying that every time now. Congratulations. 2000. Uh, we have applause from Ray offstage. We, uh, the ACA has weekly meetings Sunday mornings at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop, 307 West 5th Street at 10.30 a.m. right after the show, except for the first Sunday, Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series at 11 a.m. at Furs Cafeteria at North Cross Mall. This being the first Sunday in May, we are having our lecture today. Our guest speaker was going to be Samantha Smoot of the Texas Freedom Network, but she had to cancel at the last minute, and we don't have an update on who the speaker will be. Um, so, uh, so that's uh, that would be exciting and and mysterious. Yeah, big um, surprise. But there is there is the it, we're going Maybe to be, it'll be having Benny Hinn and we'll all get healed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, mm -hmm. um, there will be uh, we will be having the election of officers for the ACA today, regardless. And I'm sure we'll come up with some speaker. Um, Arlo has has offered to 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 uh, to do this for us if uh, we can't ridicule. come up with somebody else. So sure. so there will be there will be a speaker, and we will have the election. So Yay. come on down. All right. ACA board meetings take place at noon, right after our regular meeting on the second Sunday of every month. These meetings are open to all ACA members, but you can only vote if you're on the board of directors. That also applies to the election of officers that we're going to be doing today. The Godless Gamers meet every Monday night at 7 p.m. at the home of Vic Farrow. For more information, you can call our voicemail at 371-2911 or visit our website at www.atheist-community.org. This show can also be seen on the internet. Set your browser to spring.net and tell your faraway friends that they can do the same. That's right. And here we are. Yay. First show of May. Yes. What you, uh, how's everybody? Um, doing okay. Making we it? were not on the air last week. That's right. On account of it being a, a fifth Sunday when sometimes we can't get on the air. Mm -hmm. um, but we had a, a tape running, and I don't recall exactly what tape that was. but Older one. Compilation. Yeah. That was that one of the compilation yeah. tapes? Okay. Ray had a hair or two in that tape, so it was an older one. Really? <laughs> uh, I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> it's early. Let's do, uh, let's do the news. Yes, let's do the news. Morning, Jeff. Good morning. Morning, Arlo. Good and morning, morning Austin. Uh, here is this morning's news. Actually, this is a little bit, uh, these are relatively older news items, but some folks may ha have not have heard them yet. And um, they are important, and since we didn't get to do them last week, I thought, you know, just we'd reiterate them, bring them up to speed, because it's uh, important stuff. The Ohio State motto was ruled, right. unco yes, it was ruled unconstitutional. Um, very interesting. Uh, Ohio's official motto, with God all things are possible, violates the U.S. Constitution as a government endorsement of religion, a federal appeals court ruled Tuesday. A panel of the Sixth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals sided with the American Civil Liberties Union, which contended that the words had no secular purpose and appeared to be a government endorsement of the Christian religion. Ohio took the motto in 1959 from the writings of Matthew in the New Testament. The Ohio Attorney General was reviewing the decision and had no immediate response to it. The state could appeal the court's two-to-one ruling to the full 13-judge appellate court or ask the Supreme Court to review it. The ACLU asked the appeals court to reverse a 1998 decision by a federal judge in Columbus that allowed Ohio to display the motto as long as it does not cite the biblical origin. Within days of the ruling, workers installed a bronze plaque bearing the state seal and the motto in a plaza sidewalk leading to one of the main entrances of the state house in Columbus. The state argued that the motto does not compel people to believe anything <laughs> and that to some people it would not have a religious connotation. Well, yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, know if it's you a god. If, you, if it's a god, yeah. If you, if, uh, so uh, you With take God, that. all things are possible, but not iron chariots. There must be no iron chariots. Yeah, that's right. 
no square circles. Yeah, and Former. no eating of seafood, mm -hmm. Shell, That's right. shellfish. And, and no plenty of other things. Former governor, Joy, George Voinovich, Hi. said he got the idea to place the motto at the State House during a trade mission to India, where he spotted a public building that bore the phrase, government work is God's work. Voinovich is now a U.S. Senator for Ohio. Well, that's a good idea of how we should get our ideas of how to run things in America yeah. is go to India and see how they do it over there. Yeah. Uh, the ACLU and the plaintiff... <laughs> Forgetting, of course, that the religion that they have in yeah. India is a completely different religion. That's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the ACLU and the plaintiff it represents the Reverend Matthew Peterson, a Presbyterian minister in suburban Cleveland, objected to Ohio's use of the motto and challenged all of Ohio's official uses of the motto. It has appeared for years on the Ohio Secretary of State's stationery, on some state reports, and on Ohio tax returns, where I'm sure it's very intimidating. <laughs> um, but Would it be possible for me to just not have to pay these taxes this year? <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I believe I in God. It, yeah, I wonder if anyone's ever tried to get away should be possible, with that. right? Yeah, well, uh. That would be worth trying. Anyway, um, fascinating development. This being an election year, we're going to see quite a lot of this all around the country. All sorts of religious feuding over what we can or can't, you know, sh put in the public eye and try to disguise it as something else. Yeah, so it, it, it's going to be a really interesting year. Mm -hmm. And you can expect the people running for office to just sort of cash in wherever they think they can get the most votes by siding with well, uh, Obviously, they can cash in, on by, uh, cash in by opposing the Constitution of the United States in, in yeah. this particular matter. Right. So, question uh, is, will they be foolish enough to do that? Well, uh, just for the sake of the votes. We'll have to see. Uh, in Vermont, interesting development. So the gay marriage bill is one step closer to law. Uh, Vermont Governor Howard Dean says he will sign the first ever legislation to grant gay and lesbian couples all the benefits of marriage. So they can't marry, but they get all Hasn't the benefits. Hasn't that been signed now? Uh, well, this these are these are older stories. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, so I... If anybody out there knows whether that's actually been signed yet... Well, it's, it's quite know. possible in the two weeks uh, intervening that this has since been signed. The measure yeah. passed the State House on uh, last Tuesday, or well, not a couple of Tuesdays ago, actually, by a 79 to 68 vote. The State Senate approved the bill last week. Yes, it it was signed. Okay, okay thank great. you, Ray. Uh, okay, go ahead. I, okay. I have something to add at the end. Well, just once the law goes into effect on July 1st, gay and lesbian couples will be able to engage in civil unions that are similar to marriage. The couples then will have about 300 rights and responsibilities that are granted to married heterosexual couples, including tax benefits, health and insurance benefits, and the right to make decisions for their partners in a crisis. Couples in the unions will not receive any of the benefits of the federal government grants for marriage, uh, and the unions will not be recognized outside of Vermont. The Vermont legislature acted after the state Supreme Court found that forbidding same-sex marriages violated the state's constitution. The court ordered the state to either allow same-sex marriages or create a system that grants gay and lesbian couples all the benefits of marriage. If a couple decides to end a civil union, they will have to go to a family court to ask for a dissolution which is equivalent to a divorce. The legislation has sparked some strong opposition. The Catholic Church has organized <laughs> opponents to the measure and is vowing to defy the law's requirement that it grant benefits to partners of its gay employees. Um, who knows how many of those there are? That's entirely <laughs> As gay and lesbians have won court battles that could lead to marriage rights, 31 states have restricted marriages to male-female unions. A federal law forbids couples of the same sex from receiving federal marriage benefits and allows states to ignore marriages of same-sex couples allowed by other states. Now, I've heard that... Uh that uh, that it is federal law that the states have to recognize each other's legal contracts. Well, I guess, and so. that therefore it is what it, it it raises a federal question about whether other states can legally refuse to recognize uh, yeah. these these gay marriages. Well, let's say according to this, um, it, they say they can refuse yeah. to recognize them if they want. So I guess it could be just one of those things where. Well, they, they, you, know, you can go it. rob a bank, but <laughs> <laughs> no, the question is, will that be a violation of the law, and will you get yeah. smacked for it? Well, I, I guess we'll say uh, this is probably going to lead to, uh, you know, once again, lots more lawyering and, and yeah. stuff going on in the courts. It's, a, it's an important first step. Yes. Um, final news item of the day, as in the interest of keeping our news short and sweet. Uh, science news. Uh, you've probably seen this. Uh, we've seen er images of what are, is believed to be the early universe. Uh, scientists uh, have released the clearest pictures taken of the infant universe before stars and galaxies have formed and when space was filled with hot turbulent gases. The images confirm one major prediction of the leading theory of the explosive birth of the universe, but they failed to reveal another uh, crucial feature that scientists had hoped would buttress that theory. 
For the moment, it is uncertain how radical a revision, if any, will be required to account for the new evidence. The images, actually imprints of sound waves or ripples, were produced using a balloon-borne telescope named Boomerang. Quote, they're essentially snapshots of the universe when it was 300,000 years old, said Wayne Hu, a cosmologist at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, who wrote a separate commentary on the results in Nature, a uh, science journal. In trying to understand how the universe came about in what they believe was a giant explosion called the Big Bang some 13 billion years ago, scientists focus on ripples or variations in the temperature of the primordial gas. These can be used like a measuring stick to gauge the large-scale geometry and overall contents of the universe. The size of the ripples observed by boomerang experiment indicates the universe contains just the right amount of matter and energy to make space flat in astronomical terms, meaning that the apparent size of distant objects is determined by the ordinary law of perspective rather than appearing shrunken or magnified, mm -hmm. just as predicted by the reigning theory of how the Big Bang got started, which is called inflation. A preliminary analysis by boomerang and other experiments first revealed that flatness last fall. Quote, inflation, our boldest and most promising theory of the earliest moments of creation, passed its first very important test, said Michael Turner, a cosmologist at the University of Chicago. But a number of cosmologists were surprised by what the new images were expected to reveal, but did not. Fainter ripples of smaller size on the sky. Just as an organ pipe resonates with its main note and higher harmonics, the early universe should have contained the smaller ripples according to inflationary theory. Scientists had eagerly awaited the results of Boomerang as the first experiment that could see the smaller ripples, but it did not produce clear evidence of them. The mixed results have some scientists seeing confirmation of existing theories and others seeing the first dark hints that those theories are, if not entirely wrong, at least in need of serious revision. Quote, whatever you do, you're going to have to kill one of the holy cows of cosmology. Throw away one thing that people believe a lot in, said Max Tegmark, a cosmologist at the University of Pennsylvania. Very fascinating article. and. A, a terrific example that people can see, this is how science works. You know, you don't have, you know, you, these strict dogmatic rules that you have to abide by and believe in no matter what anybody says. And right. un unlike religion, if something comes along and, and shoots holes in things that have, uh, people have thought were true for a couple hundred years, then you kind of have to shrug your shoulders and say, well, looks like we need to dispense with that. That's right. You know, Sci th scientists, when confronted with contradictions in their scientific beliefs, mm -hmm. their job is to resolve those contradictions without, uh, without you know, glossing them over and pretending they don't exist. Yeah, don't go into denial, just, you know, you look at the facts and accept them. Yeah. So. Right, well, very cool. Yeah, uh, so, th and that's the news for today. Another thing I heard about the Vermont um, gay marriage thing is there was a story of a, uh, a government worker in Vermont who complained that she, or, or she, she said she was going to refuse to sign these gay marriage certificates because it violated her religious beliefs. Okay. And that was in the news. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's, I want to say that's not surprising. We're not going to start getting the, you know, the, the uprising against this yeah. now, now that it's, you know. I would think, though, that, um, you know, Christians in other states might be ecstatic because they would think, oh, boy, this is the way for us to get all the gays out of our state and make them move to Vermont. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that would be a way to get them, make them all happy, you know, yeah. but uh, who knows, it's, you know, it's a long way to go with things in this country. Yeah. I got a few quick announcements. Okay. Um, today is the last day of the Anniversary International Conference for the Council of Secular Humanism uh -huh. in Los Angeles, California, entitled Imagine There's No Heaven, A Future Without Religion. For more information, you can go to their website at http colon slash slash www.secularhumanism.org slash conference2000 slash index.html. And if you miss that, uh, call our voicemail number and we will get the information to you. The Free Thought Association of Central Texas is planning on celebrating Robert Ingersoll's birthday early this year in the town of Comfort, Texas, in the park, uh, which, uh, which hosts the Free Thought Rock, which we've talked <laughs> which so much about over the last mm -hmm. few years. Uh, that is in, um, that's Comfort, Texas. Uh, festivities are to begin at 11 a.m. Um, there will be an atheist read-around, bring your favorite Ingersoll quote. Lunch will be taken at the barbecue place by the park. For more directions or details, call Sally Chizek at 210-656-3796. And for the benefit of our viewers who might not know, Robert Ingersoll was? He was a very famous lecturer 
in uh, the 1920s, I think, I might have those da dates wrong, who spoke uh, against, um, against religion, was well known, a household name in the United States back in the 20s, and of course, nobody remembers him now because his, his words have been suppressed. Speaking of suppression of mm. the uh, expression of atheists, uh -oh. that free thought rock that uh -huh. we just mentioned that's in the, uh, the uh, town park in Comfort, Texas, has been opposed by the locals ever since they found out that the purpose of the rock was to recognize the contribution of free thinkers who founded their town, and that free thinker means, well, a vast number of them didn't believe in any gods. Um, so, uh, so they have decided that they don't want that in their town, and uh, it was just announced on our mailing list that they voted recently to remove that yeah. rock before the day that uh, this is supposed to Let's see. To before the let's see. Today's the seventh. I thought it said the eleventh. Anyway, just before <laughs> the uh, the oh. date of the um, the uh, celebration of Ingersoll's birthday there. So, uh, I don't know if that was intentional, but you know. Sure looks suspicious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it just it's just sad. These 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 people rock, are descendants yeah. of free thinking Germans who came to Texas to freely not practice any religion. Yeah. Who oh, many, that's uh, such a bad many thing. of them were slaughtered by uh, mm -hmm. Confederate soldiers for refusing to participate in the uh, in the Confederate Army mm -hmm. in the Civil War. Um, there's a there's a monument in the town to them, which uh, mm -hmm. is in German. So oh. I don't I don't know yeah. whether it says anything <laughs> about them being free thinkers. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, now they want to whitewash that over. It's interesting to note that there are no less than three churches facing the park where the mm -hmm. Free Thought Rock stands, mm. um, and they're they're circling their wagons, and they're, yeah. they're they are not gonna not going to uh, celebrate the the uh, right. the free thinking nature of their own ancestors. Oh well. The Center for Inquiry, which is, um, uh, which is a, uh, a function of the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal mm -hmm. and of the Council for Secular Humanism, mm -hmm. uh, they will offer a course in Austin entitled The Scientific Exam Examination of the Bible, Paul, Jesus, and the Facts at the Omni Austin Hotel South Park on September 22 to 24, 2000, that's <laughs> this year. Admission is $149 or 198 for students seeking course credit. There will also be a banquet that Saturday with an, an admission price of $35. Interesting. Huh. And I have a rapture report that I'm going to do today, but I want to get to Arlo uh, before we do that. Um, I don't know what you got for us today. I have my own little report. Oh, actually, first I want to show this little thing. I have to share <laughs> that is a great photo. Can someone zoom in on this. Yes. I found in a recent issue in, in the paper known as the Christian Science Monitor, I actually found this precious That's photo of Jerry Falwell crowd surfing. <laughs> he had recently <laughs> spoken at a, a at a college, and apparently the students just love him. Because <laughs> uh, he's so cuddly. Crowd surfing broke out at the end of his speech. I'm not sure how that happened. Maybe they were yeah. throwing him out. I didn't. Uh, yeah, didn't it looks like they were like throwing him off a cliff or something there. Uh, yeah. but now, you'll mm. remember that uh, Jesus Tree in Lockhart, Texas. Uh, there's still. Uh, no, it got yeah. some coverage on the news. Yeah, there's so the Jesus Tree was the tree it. that was supposed to have the image of Jesus in it? Yes. Okay. And, I, and it's. I think there's, uh, there's some uh, politics behind this, but. <coughs> oh, oh, yes, stealth, <laughs> stealth Christianity. Uh -huh. But um, I, I uh, heard about this on the news from other people. I'd never seen it for myself, so I had no idea what this thing was going to look like. But I wanted to investigate. Mm -hmm. So I met a friend um, down there, um, an atheist friend of mine. She lives in Luling. She seems to think she's the only atheist there. And so we drove, drove up to Lockhart, and uh, we didn't know where it was. So we asked around for it. and. Uh, we found a gentleman, we asked where the Jesus tree was, and he just was like, um, it's uh, over there. And he just pointed at a tree in ra at random. <laughs> and, and we paused, and he said, well, are you Catholic? And she, <laughs> she said yes. She said yes. I didn't say anything. And, um, and he said, well, do you believe in the tree? And I said yes, because I believe the tree exists. <laughs> I've always yeah. believed in trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, and he, he looked us up now because I guess we didn't look like we were from there or something. But uh, <laughs> anyway, then he told us where it really was. It was behind the municipal court. So he what was did trying he think to you protect were do? it in I case you were you carrying axes or something? No, yeah, no. Was a big thing of herbicide or. 
Oh, but it's, oh it's boy. Behind, it was behind the municipal court building. Around all these people. Oh, and yeah. I was like, wow. And then I realized, you know, that this is a town where they have Christian musicians set up in parking lots and seeing about bringing prayer back in school. They were yelling something like, it took one woman to take prayer out of school, so surely millions of us can bring it back or something. <laughs> something, something like that. But no the, one was The listening. reason the one woman could do that is because it was a violation of the yeah. Constitution. Because she was, I mean, right. she was and right. The she law was law. on her side. Yeah, that's how it was. A lot of be. people in that town fervently trying to reverse that again. And I think that's somewhat related to this tree because there's a sign. I, I found this later after I found it. There's a sign someone spray painted in red <laughs> Jesus at municipal court, show up or I'll really appear. Uh, <laughs> a threat, a little threaten up there. Man, this must have just been like driving through some sort of Rod Serling thing. Do they have a Do they have a lot of problem, a lot of trouble in that town with God fearing, uh, like uh, uh, people that have court dates that don't show up? <laughs> yeah. What exactly is the purpose of that of that threat? Uh, I went, we, we went. We went up to it. There's a. At first, there's a pretty big crowd of people just pointing at the tree and ooing and aahing. There are police blockades around it and tons of <laughs> Catholic things. This is very <laughs> Catholic oriented. Usually, you know, you think of you know oh, yeah. typical fundies. Yeah. But this was Catholics, and um, they got little candles around it and everything. Um, so we we couldn't really look at it at first. There were so many people, but then eventually they started leaving. So we looked at the side of the tree they were looking on, mm -hmm. and I you know, couldn't see anything. I was like, well, I. It's a tree. I don't remember Jesus having bark and branches and so many leaves, but eventually we thought, you know, maybe they were looking on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. So we slowly did a 360 around the tree, but we still couldn't find it. <laughs> and there was a man who had been, you know, kind of wandering around who saw that we had trouble. And he was asking if we saw it, you know, and I was like, well, no, I, I don't see it. And he pointed to the opposite side of the tree the crowd of people were looking at. <laughs> and he goes, it's there. It's Jesus. And uh, I, I didn't see anything. There was nothing distinguishable on there except for a branch had been cut off that's the only uh. mark I could see whatsoever uh -huh. that can't be were there it, any can nails it? in it no there's uh. just a branch leaving this kind of a triangle shaped cut in the tree uh -huh. and, and I was staring at it and he's going do you see it do you see it and I, and I, was, I, I couldn't say anything because I was concentrating really hard trying to make myself believe I see it that's you know I <laughs> Just as a service to, for their sake, I was seeing, you know, trying to see if it's possible to make myself believe it. It was that, it was so not there, I couldn't, I couldn't even see that. So uh. he, he points and he goes, see that, see that? And he points to where there's that cut in a tree and he says, that's his hands. So it wasn't even natural, it's just a cut in the tree. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, oh, okay. Oh. And he said, do you see his eyes? And I was thinking, okay, eyes, a couple of dots. Yeah. You know, as far as that. But I couldn't see that, I couldn't even see that. And he was getting really frustrated, and he moves the police blockade aside, goes, there, right there, two dots, in Jesus' eyes, and, and uh, there was nothing there, so, I don't know, I, uh, I think it's just, uh, they just whip this up, yeah. and people believe it because they Do you want see to. the canals on Mars? Yeah. Look there, through that yes. telescope, see them? Yes, see them? Like Coincidentally enough, the new issue of Skeptical Inquirer's cover story is about mass delusions and hysterias. And this sounds exactly like what this is, it's a mass mm -hmm. delusion. Uh, this article talks about many similar things that have happened throughout various cultures mm -hmm. uh, in, in American history as well as world history. You have like the, the whole Orson Welles War of the Worlds radio scare. Mm -hmm. um, you have uh, this bizarre thing that happened in Africa a few years back where men thought that their penises were disappearing. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, the, the vanishing <laughs> genitalia mass panic. Um, just go over a couple of other things. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Mad Gasser of Mattoon, 1944, uh, residents of Mattoon, Illinois, were thrust into the world media spotlight after a series of imaginary gas attacks by a phantom anesthetist. <laughs> it, it, this is this is exactly one of these cultural sort of things where this you know this idea gets planted, and by the power of suggestion, just people accept it uncritically, and it takes on a life of its own and spreads yeah. and spreads. It's like this brain virus. And, it's very and that's a great. Uh, segue into today's Rapture Report. Ah, Now, so. for those of you who have, are new to the show, uh, we've been doing these things uh, every few weeks, ever since uh, before the, uh, the, uh, the rollover from 1999 to 2000. 2000. Um, we have been keeping track of all of the predictions of doom, of the end of the world, of uh, Jesus' return, of all these apocalyptic claims mm -hmm. and uh, and keeping track of exactly how many of them come true and exactly how many have failed 
<laughs> well, the number that have come true have so far been totaled exactly zero. Uh -huh. And, uh, uh, today, and what's, what's the score today? Uh, I have not been actually keeping track. That would be a that would be a good thing to do. But you know, we'd have to set an arbitrary point at which we yeah. start counting because people have been making these apocalypse claims throughout human history. Uh -huh. These are just uh, these are just the the, the, the current pending ones and uh, the ones that have recently gone bad. Okay. Uh, sometime in April, we were supposed to have this. The Whites, a family of ascetic doomsday cultists living in Jerusalem, expected the end to take place, to take place in March or April after the Ark of the Covenant reappeared in a cave. Which, of course, it didn't do. Uh. They claim that there was a mistake in the chronology of the Hebrew calendar and that the year 6001 or would that be 6001 by yeah, Ray Blevins' by, system, by the will begin this Levin's spring. Standard. In reality, September 11, 1999 to September 30, 2000 was the Hebrew, Hebrew year 5760. That's failed. Uh, Didn't happen. Anytime it, by the, at the end of April passed, no such luck. Mm -hmm. And then there was a bunch of them slated to take place on the 5th, which was Friday. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, do you got something on that? Well, I just want up. to buttress what you're about to uh, announce, just so just go ahead. According to archaeologist Richard W. Noon, N-O-O-N-E, or no one, <laughs> interesting last name, in his book 5-5-2000, Ice the Ultimate Disaster, a buildup of excess ice in Antarctica, strange, I thought global warming was making it melt, yeah. is causing the Earth to become precariously unbalanced, which is a ridiculous idea to anyone with the slightest understanding of Earth science. All that's needed to upset this supposed imbalance and cause the obligatory pole shift, which will cause billions of tons of ice to go cascading across the continents, <laughs> is the planetary alignment that will take place on this date. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Anyone remember 1982? The yeah. year of the last gra great conjunction, when the world right. utterly failed to end? Uh, well, it did it again okay. on Friday. I guess Fix not going to cut to that, so I'll just put it down. On, uh, um, also on May 5, massive Earth changes are predicted by Richard Kininger. Uh, apparently this is related to Richard Noon's claims. Mm -hmm. Volcanoes, earthquakes, choking gases, etc. I'm yada. sorry, none of it happened. Uh. Also on May 5, 2000, the now... Nuwaubians, also known as the Holy Tabernacle Ministries, or Ancient Mystical Order of Melchizedek. Oh, Melchizedek. <laughs> Who, oh, you heard of that? Yeah, that is a character who supposedly uh, lives forever and has always been alive in the Bible. <laughs> is, is that some kind of god? Is that like another god? Uh, he has yeah. no beginning nor end. He has no... No parents, no descendants. They Maybe I'll look him like up. God, and I just thought that I think that's interesting. Well, anyway, his father claims that the, the planetary lineup will cause a star holocaust, pulling the planets toward the sun. Again, planets are always are still always yeah. where they were, still doing what they've always done. Shucky darn. None of that happened. Okay, still pending. Here. Uh, and I'm just going to do the May ones. I've got a whole bunch of them here that yeah, are, are slated yeah, throughout throughout the month. year with no particular date. <laughs> let's just do the upcoming ones to watch for in the next few weeks. Oh, boy. Toshio Hiji, having analyzed the quatrains of Nostradamus. Oh, oh great. Again. The Japanese are into Nostradamus now. Announced that the great deluge of Noah will inundate the Earth on May 9 this year and all humans will be perished, he said in his bad English. Prior to this, a third of the world's population was to be destroyed during an alien attack on October 3, 1999. <laughs> Whoops! Didn't take so his... There's <laughs> <one. laughs> so part of his prediction is already proven false. And didn't the great deluge of Noah, if you're gonna believe in the that, biblical yeah. stuff, didn't that happen a long time ago? Yeah. I don't get it. Old May Shio needs his meds. <laughs> May 17. Jesus is scheduled to debut his presence here on here on Earth. No, that is not a typo, by the way. All you classical lit buffs should know what it means. Think Gilgamesh. Oh. I'm not sure what I'm, I got these off the web. Um, I'm not sure what I, that I've reference is. I've read the Epic of Gilgamesh, but I don't recall. Earth. Anybody know what that uh, means? Capital E A R T H. And, uh -huh. According to starry-eyed soothsayer Rebecca Harrison, also known as St. John. Hey, why not? Then in June 2003, the final battle takes place. Jesus said, no man knows the day and hour, but apparently the month and year were not covered. <laughs> <laughs> also, there will be a 40-day period of fasting from August 20 to September 30. You have been warned. 
finally, use oh. for all those Y2K canned meats. <laughs> Yay. May 17, wow. again, same date. May 17, Jesus to return in a spaceship, according to White Buffalo Calf Woman. <laughs> or maybe that's just another one of Rebecca Harrison's many pseudonyms. Oh, that would be Saint White Buffalo Calf Woman. <laughs> Folks, the, if you believe in, the, in this like biblical stuff at all, there, it's very clear what you're supposed to think about people who pr make predictions mm -hmm. that don't come true. They're called false prophets. Yes, and you're supposed to And you can to put Falwell mm -hmm. and Robertson mm -hmm. and all those creeps in the false prophet category because they've all predicted these things that failed to come true. Remember, was it, was it Robertson with the hurricane that was going to wipe out oh, Orlando, Orlando, Florida because of, yeah. because of Disney's uh, willingness to, uh, to recognize same-sex unions? Uh, oh, we have a long-distance call from Joe Zemecki. Joe Zemecki on line two. From Let's Joe go straight Zemecki. to Joe. Joe! Well, good morning. Hi, Joe. You we doing, can't Joe? hardly hear Joe in here. Can somebody turn up the, the studio can I, speaker? Can I just explain this real quick since I'm already showing it? Yeah, go. Well, you guys are messing no, they went. Do, do it after Joe. Okay. Hi, Joe. What's well, up? I didn't want to interrupt anything. No, go ahead, man. Okay, well. We still can't hardly hear you, though. All Control right, I'll try room. to talk a little louder. Oh, there we go. All uh, set. Go ahead. Speaking of Pat Robertson, yeah. there's a prediction that I like to pull out once in a while. In 1982, Pat Robertson predicted the end of the world in uh, the 1970s, saying that the Soviet Union will invade Israel and two billion people will die. Yeah. Quite a crazy uh, prediction there. But he's what year did he those. predict that? Yeah. Four? What's that? When was that supposed to happen? Uh, well, in 1982. <laughs> uh, well, seeing as how there aren't two billion people in Israel... Right. I, mean, I would think that that Well, would there be would be after all the, the yeah. invaders came. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something else. I tried to call in last week, but I just didn't get to it. Um, oh, well, well, we, we, weren't, weren't, we weren't live anyway. Oh, okay. Well, and then the week before, when I really wanted to call, yeah. I guess y'all were, um, over Easter weekend, I was in California. I went to the American Atheist uh, yeah. Convention, the 26th National Convention there. Right, yeah. we announced that. Right. Oh, great, great, thanks. I got Not the party. until the weekend it was happening, but <laughs> we did eventually get around to mentioning it. Our hearts were no, in the cool. right place. It was great. I got to party in San Francisco with my sister again at Haight-Ashbury. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, cool. I got to see the whole town, and I uh, met Douglas Adams. Cool. All right. Uh, real yeah, nice guy. Great. He is tall. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had... Um, he seems much shorter in his books. I don't know. Right, exactly. Uh, everything went great there, and... Uh, I guess that was it. I just wanted to uh, let you know that and also uh, close by giving a, a quote here from Isaac Asimov. All right. Who died in 1992. Um, he says, quote, I am an atheist, out and out. It took me a long time to say it. I've been an atheist for years and years, but somehow I felt it was intellectually unrespectable to say that one, one is an atheist because it assumed a knowledge that one didn't have. Somehow it was better to say one was a humanist or agnostic. I don't have the evidence to prove that God doesn't exist, but I so strongly suspect that he doesn't that I don't waste my time. Unquote. Excellent quote. Good Isaac. for Isaac. All right, thanks a lot. Now, if you could, I'd love to listen off the air on hold for a while. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Yeah, All right, Joe. to hear from you, Joe. Okay, then. He's a great guy. Yeah, Joe uh, Zemecki used to be the co-host of this very show. Mm -hmm. uh, is now living in New Jersey and uh, working with American Atheists. Fighting a good fight up there. Okay. Um, let's go back to what you were mm -hmm. showing there. Oh, well, it was just uh, essentially... Uh, a little prop for part of my lecture, but I'm not. I'm not going to show it again. But I'm going to read the. Uh, yeah, we lost him. Oh, huh? No, the quote. Because you're talking about false prophets. Revelation 16:13. Frogs, okay. frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And I have a. Uh, <laughs> frogs come Benny out of Hen's Benny spitting mouth. out frogs, and of course we have Pat Robertson, Mrs. Van Imp or Impy. I'm still uh, not sure which that is. And she. Oh, they make prophecies all the time. Oh, um, that's, yeah. Miss Van Empey and or Roxella, <laughs> Reg Roxella yeah. Van Empey. Wait, that Van other guy, Empey. that other guy, you can bring that picture back. That yeah. black and white picture. This guy. Didn't yeah. I see him on John God, God stuff? Yeah, Jonathan yeah. Bell. Yeah. And um, actually, he hasn't made any predictions. Why is he on there? Uh, oh well, it's just a great, a, child it's a great right? picture. Yes, he is multiple times. <laughs> well, Eleven, eleven children. <laughs> uh, he was a Canadian hairdresser, and then he found the call of God. Yeah. And uh, just, but then he go back uh, on that tape that you gave me. Arla gave yeah, me he went. He great, went back to. Yeah, went back to hairdressing after a while. He went sort back of mellowed to hairdressing because <laughs> he had just molested so many children. Yeah, he wasn't going to make it as yeah. a reverend. Oh uh, boy! All right. Um, okay, so we did rapture report. Yeah. Um, I got something else to talk about. Unless, what, do you want to do more, Arlo? You no, got go for it. Yes. Okay. Oh, let's. Uh, couple of things going on. First of all. <laughs> 
It's oh, comedy I can't hour, kids. I can't bring myself to subject anybody else to this thing. <laughs> my wife picked this up at, uh, at a local grocery store. <laughs> God made outer space. Yay. This is a little, very thin, uh, simple science for kids. And uh, I'm just going to introduce some simple. dramatic readings from this book and show you just <laughs> yeah. how simple the science in this book actually is. It's so simple it doesn't exist. God Made Outer Space by Hino Head Jr. <laughs> that name again is Hino Head Jr. Yeah. The Bible's first words are, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before creation, all was dark and empty, lonely and quiet. All what was All dark? what was! <laughs> there was nothing before creation, so how could it be anything? Create means to make. When God created, he made things. Did he now? He made lots of things to fill the place we call outer space. Did he now, make... wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, uh... Didn't they just say God made outer space? Now, on the page three of the book, God made things to fill the place we call outer space, which, were, which was already there in the beginning. That big emptiness was outer space, yeah. which predates God, or at least is as old as God, according to this book. Okay. He scattered stars across space, sparkling up the darkness. Because, you know, otherwise it's boring. God didn't make all stars the same size. That would be boring. Instead, <laughs> he made some stars huge, huge. others are medium-sized, yeah. and some are small, which are, of course, scientific terms all the way. Uh, but it's important to notice that the stars that God made, apparently, have craters, craters on them. Look at this. Are craters or either big pepperonis, one of the two. Yeah. I, can't, I cannot read that. These are stars, I folks. cannot read that. Oh. Howard. We've just had an announcement that our speaker today. Oh, Howard Thompson will be the speaker. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. He is a great. He on is the a, myth of America's Christian origin, which okay. is a good topic. He's done that on the show. Yes. But, well, um, but keep going, please. In church or school, you may get stars for doing good work. These stars usually look like this, and there's like a little five pointed star goldfish thing. But God made his stars round. <laughs> keep reading, and you'll find out why. And it talks about the stars being all different colors, and that they're hot. And again, where stars are depicted as having craters on them. God put all of the stars into big groups. We call these giant groups of stars galaxies. Some galaxies are shaped like footballs, others look like pinwheels. God made galaxies in any shape he wanted. And then it shows this picture of a bunch of different galaxies, none of which, by the way, bears the slightest resemblance to any actual Real, galaxy. Yeah, we have a okay. swastika galaxy. There was a swastika galaxy. <laughs> My favorite, the vagina galaxy. There we are. Right? The snake galaxy. And the tapeworm galaxy. <laughs> Yeah. There is just nothing like that out there. There's not that, and I, oh, it's important to point out this character, okay? Here's this lab-coded creationist teaching scientists to children, okay? I'm sorry, <laughs> you can't just put a creationist in a lab coat and suddenly you got science. You can't? No. Oh. Uh, the Milky Way is the name, name of our galaxy. And the Babe Ruth is the name of that other galaxy. <laughs> the stars we see and Three at night. Musketeers is the name of that galaxy. The stars we see at night are part of that galaxy. Milky Way stars are sprinkled across our nighttime sky like sugar on blackberries. Aww. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought the space was a big empty place. I didn't know it was a bunch of sweet fruits. Yeah. As we look at the stars at Aww. night, we can see patterns in the sky. These patterns are called constellations. And then it shows some constellations. This, the Big Dipper. The Little Dipper, which is nearly the same size as the big one in this, and the creepy scientist guy who was dressed in a lab coat on the last page and is now dressed as a Greek hero. Uh, it says, there is even a constellation that looks like a man hunting. It's called Orion the Hunter. Can you see his club and shield? Well, yeah, but no mention of the fact that another perfectly respectable religion came up with these freaking constellations. That's right. That these are references to a different religion than the one you're trying ancient, to foist on the mind of man. An ancient religion, yeah. Uh, and I love your response to the one creationist who said that... Uh, the well, reason stars were created was to guide, you know, humans in their travels. And he says along the lines of, okay, well, why then all of these cryptic looking <laughs> constellations, why didn't God just put nice big arrows up in the sky that said north? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's line, just line the stars up in a big arrow. Hey. Yeah, oh, right. here's an interesting thing. You I'm want to talk about my dramatic reading? Can but we this, hold that to the end? Well, it just ties into all that. Right, go but, ahead. Okay. Well, it just you're talking about the the yeah. interesting little contradictory right. things that oh, Mr. Hino Head was saying. Yeah. The Bible itself has a very bizarre account of how creation is supposed to have happened. 
Um, in Genesis 1, 5, it states, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Okay, let there be light, three, three to five. Right. God said, let there be light, and then in five it says, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. But how You skip down, wait a second, yeah. you skip down yeah. to... Um, Genesis 1.14, where it said, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Okay. So he does it again. So somehow he manages to create day and night before he creates light in yeah. the heavens. He creates, he creates light in the heavens before he creates the stars, which are, of course, the source of the light. <laughs> and he calls, he, 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 yeah. he calls things day and night, even though what night is is the shadow of the earth Mm -hmm. blocking out the light of our sun. Mm -hmm. Without the Earth, there is no night. Mm -hmm. It can't happen. And until there were planets, there couldn't possibly have been a thing to be called night. Which it's, is so interesting. it's just completely freaking Which stupid. Is what's, but just within the text of Genesis, you have day and night created first, yeah. and then the light that would distinguish then, those two things is created afterwards. Then this, then this book goes on, and it, it points out that, how big the sun is, and it goes into, God put the Earth at just the right distance from the sun, not too close or we would get too hot, not too far or we would be too cold, but just right. Ah. Well, actually, there's a rather wide band in which you can have mm. you know, uh, a, a reasonably acceptable conditions. We just happen to be somewhere in the middle of that big wide band. And uh, this is, of course, a reference to the, uh, to the argument that uh, conditions are just right for us. Mm -hmm. But that is a completely spurious argument it, the reason conditions are just right for us is we involved, evolved under these conditions. Yeah. We didn't evolve <laughs> under different conditions. If yeah. we had, these conditions would be wrong for us. Mm. And then it shows the sequence of the nine planets, and it talks a little about them, and they're not, those aren't too stupid. Then God made the moons, well, that and Earth stupid. has one moon, Mars has two moons, Saturn has 20 moons, poor Mercury and Venus have no moons at all, oh, as if moons were some kind of prize. Poor moon. God, you can, see, huh? you can see God hurdles asteroids at us all the time. Yeah, that, just Darn, wait, I just missed. Wait, just wait. That's, oh, wait. A, that's what it gets into next. God also created comets. Comets are made of ice and rock. Sometimes they are called dirty snowballs. He made asteroids, too. Asteroids are large rocks found between Mars and Jupiter. And he made meteors. Meteors are tiny rock fragments from comets. God was busy. Yeah, he was busy filling up our solar system with rogue objects wandering around and occasionally smacking into our planet and killing off huge numbers of species. To deceive us Good of, the work. of the nebula theory. Yeah. Good work, God. Yeah. Um, God was almost finished creating the universe. With his words, he stirred up space. Remember now, space is this big nothing. You can't stir a nothing. <laughs> and everything began to spin. The great pinwheel galaxies began to slowly spiral around. What, until then they just hovered there? So the, the Nazi galaxy turned into a starfish galaxy. The forces of the stars in those galaxies didn't like make them collapse. They just hung there in space until God got around to spinning up the nothing and making the galaxies go. It all makes sense. And there's another then, then back galaxy. to, remember, remember they were gonna tell us why the, uh, the stars are round. Remember oh. how I told you God made the stars round? Round is the perfect shape for spinning! Now excuse me, you can spin any physical object. You really can! A, if, if you're only worried about if you're worried about Thank friction, you for that if you're worried about friction, there is still a vast number of shapes. Foot, a football spinning along its axis would not encounter any friction with the right. surrounding space. Mm -hmm. Neither would a cylinder or any of a vast number of other shapes. But of course, there's no reason to wor worry about friction. You can spin any shape you want because space is a bunch of nothing. nothing. You don't have friction against nothing. It's completely stupid. Huh. There oh. will be a test, folks. So just uh, the me uh, planets have, have two motions. They began to spin around like tops. They also traveled around the sun. The moons began to travel around the planets. No, they didn't like crash into the planets. You know, because <laughs> of the gravitational forces dragging them together. Because God hadn't made them spin yet. <laughs> Nonsense. Comets and asteroids started their silent journeys around the sun. The meteors drifted through space. Sometimes they entered Earth's air, speeding up and heating up. They left 
quick trails across the night sky, streaks called shooting stars. God made outer space an exciting place, and he made the surface of the Earth an exciting place, too, where sometimes these things don't burn up in the atmosphere. They smack into our planet, and they okay. cause huge Calm. explosions and Calm. kill vast numbers of species. Calm. Even us at Calm. some point, folks. Calm. Calm. Odds are we will Calm. be hit by a major asteroid in the next several uh, Jeff, uh, tens Jeff, it's of it's centuries. Okay. It's okay. It's I'm okay. almost done with the book. It's okay. Just, I'm fine. Just when God had finished creating the planets and moons and stars, he looked at all that he had made and said, it is good. You can uh. read more about <laughs> God's creation in the Bible. Just look up Genesis chapter 1. And I we did, and even it doesn't guess make sense. Guess what? I'm going to do that. Please zoom in on this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what, and, you want to know the shape of the earth according to the Bible? There's a few verses to uh, figure this all out for us. <laughs> it is Hold he, that far away. More, more steady. Sorry. Well, uh, I, they saw enough of it. Oh, this is Hino. Yeah, this the, guy himself is yeah, Hino. Yeah, that's Hino. He's man. on the back cover in a spacesuit. And he looks like the uh, Folks, this is intellectual child abuse for children. This yeah. book is absolutely stupid from beginning to end. It's not even simple science. It's there is such a thing as simple science. This is not it. This is simple-minded, theistic nonsense. And we have a call in line, too. You mind if oh, I... Oh, okay. Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's grab the call and then. Uh, Hello, Mike. Mike. Hey, guys. Hi, Mike. Morning. What can we do hey, for you? I'm, I'm sitting there watching your show, and, uh, you know, I take a, a really scientific approach to uh, theology. You do. But, uh, and, you know, I try to analyze everything, but analyzing a children's book, most children's books are written for simple minded people. But they're uh, not but quite full of yeah, blatant except for this one, which was every children's book. You can, you can take, I, I have two young children, and I can take any one of their children's book and find lots of scientific nonsense in them. But they're meant for simple, for simple minds to begin to understand. Yeah, there's, there is no to throw science in the this detail. book. That's the problem. It's just there wrong. is no science yeah. whatsoever in this book. It's just it's just a wrong it is, book. It is, children's it is, book it is meant for five-year-old children. That is called science. What, what are you guys doing reading a five-year-old children's book? It's is it so that you can understand it? I don't understand. Yeah. I've seen so, textbooks proposed to be put in our schools that are just like that. Yeah. Am I, I to understand? I read, you know, am I to understand I that you do children. not have an objection to lying and, to children? No. You don't. Any, you don't. Any children's book you read, okay? I'm, I'm looking at a book right now on my bed. Curious George. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Does Curious George say talk. on it anywhere this is science? No, there's not. Okay. But okay. There is a. There is. And what does that have to do with that? For them to build about. upon in later years, for them to make their own choices. But Curious George is a storybook, and this is a book that that passes itself off. Any book as and, being and scientific fact. And you guys were talking about the, 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 you know. The, yeah, the I mean, Greek there's, there's a distinction with the to make between of Orion. Do, you, do you think that any of the stuff? Do you think that any of the stuff that we just mentioned here is accurate? It's not accurate at all. So okay. should so right. should children and be taught inaccurate but things? But it is a way for them to understand it better. When you talk about <laughs> okay, the what, stars, I understand what, what, listen, guys, what, listen, what kind of under of of understanding can you have of inaccurate nonsense? Basic understanding to let them build upon it where they can understand it. But of what? Let, let, of what? Let, let's of let's what? take a look back in the what, you know, early 1400s when. You know, they thought that the world was still flat. Yeah. People wrote well, I, well, that's books. actually a fallacy. But well, come yeah, on. People wrote books because that's the way that they understood it. When right? they looked up and saw that the stars were there, they assumed that you know, being a you know an Earth-centric yeah. type and of they people, stopped writing those books because that, we know better now. Yeah. Correct. But we know better except now. Except these right? people haven't started now, stopped writing those books. Yeah. See, the the difference the, there is when you don't have the knowledge. You can understand why people might make wrong assumptions about things. I but today we okay. understand Let's how the universe works. We understand in, in, in most ways. We understand how the solar system operates. So there's no excuse to print a school book for children that is you start full of this is factual errors. It is propaganda. It is lies all. about science. Okay. It is lies about the nature of our universe. And, and I just, it is for the express purpose of indoctrinating children into the Christian religion. Now, do you have a problem with that? No. You don't have a problem with indoctrinating no. children into the Christian you religion. What I find bewildering. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, let, listen, guys. Answer. I had a lot of trouble. Yeah. You know, because, you know, early on, you know, in, in my life, I was a very analytical person. I looked at science. I was, I was a, a, a biology major in college uh -huh. and looked at science as a way of, you know, looking at things. But if you, if you take a look at science, and it's, it's completely feasible to, to combine science with religion, okay. Religion was was a uh, basis. No, no, come on, come on, guys. Religion was no, a basis not. for yeah, people well, we, we to explain things that they could not explain early on. Okay? That's that's that that's referred your, to. You know, I don't know anything about the atheist community, but I'm sure that that's the basis for your 
your beliefs, right? What, that what religion is? came about from people not understanding things and needed sure. a way to explain them, correct? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Now, that doesn't make, there is that doesn't make the explanations accurate or correct, but now, we understand the psychological... It, is, it makes there it is a understandable. Look at the time that the that Bible was written. Might, now, wait a minute. Uh, this, uh, this is an important point. Uh, it's certainly understandable that when people don't, uh, don't have uh, a- accurate knowledge about a thing, right, they may come up with uh, with ideas about uh, to tr- try to explain that thing that they don't understand. That's perfectly understandable. Correct. I mean, there's but, still there's still topics out there now that we don't faith, understand that we have when, a no, please, semi-valid please, explanation for. When you call it faith, and you say believe this, even though it, what it is is it's still that empty speculation about stuff you don't really understand. Okay, that's a mistake. That and is that's still what science. Getting. What you guys don't understand, there's lots of things printed in science textbooks that are still unproven that are based on a thought of somebody that has not physically been proven yet. Okay? Well, yeah, yeah, but, but, but see, the difference is... When, but scientists do not say, take this on faith. They don't say, believe this because, oh, it's exciting because, you know, this, this, this claim that they yes, they loves do. you. They do say, believe this because we can't come up with a, another valid explanation And for And it. they no. also say, as soon as we come up with a better one, we will discard the old one and move on. Correct. But religion now, doesn't do that. Religion. This is no. a big book full look at, of look at the full of taking okay, age-old misunderstandings here. about the nature of the universe and and indoctrinating children in those in those misunderstandings and getting them to believe them to have faith in them okay, at a young age. And the Big that Bang is Theory has abuse. not been proven yet. There is what? no physical way to prove the Big Bang Theory. We have people out there looking now at the exact shape of the universe, so whether it's oval my, you... or flat. And they're saying that because the, the universe is an oval shape, that they're taking pictures right now with the Hubble telescope and saying that the, the universe is an oval shape, therefore it's proving the Big Bang Theory. Well, the Big Bang Theory cannot physically, there is no explanation for it. Okay, it's a bunch, there's lots of different explanations. It's, 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 it's called a theory. theory. Today, Sir, if you do not my understand out there and it modern cosmology, okay, there are people whose job it is to to you know to understand this stuff and you don't. Can I can I? Say, but the 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 point is. I understand you're right, it better than you guys, obviously. The the, the 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 thing is the difference is that when science does say these are theories, and that's it's, that's science is not making a. It is still, It's not about making it is absolute pronouncements book, about absolute truths about and, things. And in college, I still admit learned that. about the Big Bang theory. Well, did you hear the New York news article that I read at the beginning of the program? No, I I just woke up, turned on your TV. Okay, and well, I I had a news article about uh, insulting that, uh, a children's book. Okay, caller, mm-hmm. caller, yeah. we have a problem here because we can't hardly hear you here in the studio. We're straining our ears to to hear you. Invite and, me down to the show. Okay, hang on, hang on. They they boosted the the okay. Microphone. We can hear That's you now. good. Okay. And now, if you would please take your turn and not talk over us, that would help a lot too. Yeah, we'd be able to answer your questions a lot more easily. Okay. But just the, artic- the article was about uh, images that were made uh, from a uh, balloon-born uh, telescope where imprints of sound waves or ripples have been detected that, um, that do account for evidence to back up the Big Bang Theory, but what is evidence, what, actually what is interesting about the ripples that they've detected is they, they detected certain types of ripples, but they were expecting to find other types that they didn't find. So what it means now is that the scientific community is looking at revising a great many uh, underlying theories that they have held for many years about how the Big Bang may or may not have happened. But now, see, that's how science works. Now, though. were those... But Okay. In it's a, the in difference a, between. Let look me just at the Bible. To you. Let, me, let me just explain to you the distinction because I think you're missing it. The, the, the difference is that in science, that's, that's what you have, or you have theories, and then you test them. And that's what it's about. It's a constant process of acquiring knowledge, looking at evidence, discarding what you used to think may be true, or keeping it if the ev- evidence backs it up. Uh, but it's, it's an ongoing sort of organic process, that, and you never seem to know how it's going to go. It's only, go- it's only based upon what the evidence will show you. Okay, There's a big difference between that and religion coming along and making bold pronouncements like God made outer space. Can, can There's I, can a I big make a, difference between those give two his, things. Give him his chance. Okay, okay. go ahead, caller. Okay, what, I challenge you to find any scientific documentation written 4,000 years ago that explains things where people can understand it. See, I look at the Bible, what, what's and, that and I'm, to do with I, now? no, listen, listen, what I'm one of the few people that actually, I think I look at the Bible more of a historical concept of 
this book was written 4,000 years ago. Yeah. Therefore, it was written, much like children's books are written these days, to where people can understand them. If God, you know... Okay. No, take, taking God aside, taking God completely out of this, if someone had told the people of the Jewish community yeah. um, 4,000 years ago, hey guys, the world was created based on a big explosion. There used to be giant lizards walking the earth. Men were created yeah. from a uh, an organism in the ocean that somehow, somewhere, there's a catalyst in there that caused life to erupt, therefore uh, evolving out of that. the ocean, yeah. coming on to the land. Now, people wouldn't have understood that back then. It would have been shot, or not yeah. shot, but they would have been you know, crucified. I think I see what you're getting at. But the, the Bible, take a look at it. It's a book written 4,000 years ago. Yeah. Okay? Now, well, people... No. B- bits of it are. B- bits of it are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, that the the message that was given to those people were a message much like you would t- teach your children. I don't tell my children uh-huh. lots of things. Mm. Okay. Okay, because I no, you guys wanted me to let you finish. Let me finish now. All right. Okay. okay. Much like I take the same approach to my children is I tell them enough so that they can understand and then they grow from there. Yeah. Okay. Right. And and I and I challenge my children to go out and learn things that I didn't know and to go out and learn things that I didn't teach them. Okay. Okay. Can I respond? Sure. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, that, uh, I think I see where you're coming from. At first, I thought that what you were doing was you were thinking that we were criticizing people for not understanding things very well thousands of years ago, and we're not doing that. It's perfectly understandable for people to uh, to have misunderstood things like before the knowledge had been acquired. Great. That that's not the issue. Sure. Yeah. The issue is what do you say about those things now? Okay. Here, here's, here's my response the problem. to that. No, wait. Here's the problem. This book, okay, God Made Outer Space, this does not provide children with a simple introduction to the actual facts. What this book does is this book provides a simple introduction to the Christian belief system. And, and it calls it science. And I tell and you, that's a lie. That if there was and a that's book, what we're objecting to. If there was a book written three years ago on the Big Bang theory for children as a creationist type of, or not a creationist, but as a, as a, a scientific yeah, yeah. explanation, three years ago, it would have been a lie. It, it would have been, have been based have on been a belief a, that has been not been inaccurate, proven. Only to the extent that we that there may be knowledge that we haven't acquired yet. Okay. Correct. The there actual, is still knowledge that no, you guys haven't acquired. The yet. actual claims in that book would have been founded on the currently available evidence. It, this book isn't. It is not founded on the currently available evidence. It is founded on that 4,000-year-old book you're talking about. Okay. okay? The currently there is no available excuse. evidence. There is no excuse once we have learned better to keep perpetuating old misunderstandings. Now, and and you another don't... difference is that no one is building a religion. The, the Big Bang Theory is not a religious belief. No one's building religions it's theoretical. around theoretical. That, that, that doesn't really... Well, I think but, but that, see, well, that's here's true. A, here's but see, here's a point, guys. Sure Maybe, okay, if there is a God, and I'm not going to preach to you guys and try to tell you that there is a God or, an, uh, or another power out there. Maybe God is like I am with my children, expects you to go out and find the things that I haven't taught you. I, my Boy, six-year-old I, you know, is very I, inquisitive. I, I, goes I out expect people to go out and find things yeah. that, and that things. haven't been discovered yet. Okay. I expect that. I know yeah. God. And I, I, give, I give my children a, basic, a base no, no, to go no, 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 My turn. As a, I, I expect that as a basic intellectual responsibility of my fellow citizens. Okay? This is indoctrination that tells little children, look, um, uh, but your source of knowledge is going to be the Bible, we want that this is this is where the answers come from. We're gonna lie about science and and make up all this crap that isn't true, and we're gonna tell you that this is where you're gonna get your facts from. Okay? I can find and that's a that is just unconscionable. Books. And I'm being asked to move on now. Thank you very much for your call. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye bye. What line was he too? Uh, yeah. Also, but the big th- the main theory, how did it come about? It didn't come about from an idea straight off of doctrine. It came out from observations. You know, the right. universe expanding, yeah. the back, black, background black body radiation. Religions don't come about from, from such no, things. No, they don't come, religion did not, does not come from observation. It comes from revelation, okay? Yeah. Which is the claim that it's possible for prophets to just know stuff, okay? Yeah. With, on, based on no evidence whatsoever. Boy, didn't we just get through yeah, the, the rapture, rapture report with a bu- talking about how 
over and over and over again, these prophets are just full of crap. Yeah. They haven't a clue what they're doing. Sure, I can excuse people 4,000 years ago yeah. for believing, oh yeah, this guy, you know, a lot of people believe him. He claims X, so maybe that's true, yeah. right? But after 4,000 years of noticing that these prophets are never right, mm -hmm. or not right any more than just people random guessing would justify, yeah. After 4,000 years of that, it is, it is time to set that aside. It's completely stupid to continue clinging to 4,000-year-old misunderstandings when yeah. we know better. And it's and unconscionable to so. be indoctrinating children in those 4,000-year-old misunderstandings before they have a chance to look at the actual evidence and understand it themselves. Also, I think the caller had made, was making had the basic theist's mistake of not being able to, <clears throat> of, of thinking that science is some sort of competing yeah, belief no, system I, to I, religion. I, I, right. When it's not. Science is, a, is not a belief system, it's a process of obtaining yeah, knowledge. There, and there they is don't. A, there is a big difference between the absolute lack of yeah. evi any evidentiary basis at yeah. all for revelation. Okay? And, uh, There's and a big difference between that yeah. and the honest admission by scientists that there is stuff we don't know yet, yeah. that our theor current theories are based on the best available evidence that we have right now, and that they may have to be amended, revised, or even thrown out in future if we learn more. And I was there is a big difference. Yeah. In one case, you got people just making shit up, and in the other case, you have people honestly trying <laughs> to understand. And I was bewildered we by have more callers. this yeah, guy's yeah. claim that it's okay, that you can possibly give anybody, especially a child, a foundation for going on to obtain later knowledge by first filling their head yeah, full of lies. He admits it's not accurate, and then he yeah. says he gives them a foundation. What's how, that? How does a head full of lies uh, yeah. be a foundation for anything? Look, I the guy said it. it was okay to lie to children, so yeah, fine. Let's go. All right. Let's Callers. go to Aurora. Aurora? Hello? Wait a minute. Aurora? Yes, hi. Hi. Good morning. morning. for you? How are you doing? Good. We're all right. Um, ask this guy if uh, all the foundations for the churches uh, why there's so many pedophiles in the churches. <laughs> what about that? Well, I mean, yeah, is that, is I that don't think we want to go God? there. That's an unpleasant enough topic as it is. Yeah. And, you know, in, in the preaching of the, uh, the churches, and, and then they hide behind the church to say, oh, it's okay. It's, it's, it's a thing that's okay with the church. But, yeah, yeah. but see, Christians have always done that. They've always, religion has been the great, you know, you know, don't pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Oh. You know, the, 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 the Christians even have a bumper sticker, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. The implication of which is all you have to do is become a Christian, then you can do any, anything, whatever you like. And, but you're, which you're is forgiven. bizarre, because yeah. that's, of course, what they accuse atheists of. Yeah. They, accuse a, uh, they accuse us of becoming atheists, so we can be free to do whatever we want. Yeah, so that we have no but morals. that's but. what Christianity is. Christianity is, or at least some forms of it. Yeah. But some is, forms of it, not I have, all. I have a new are, book. Are, you get the forgiveness of God, you become saved, and then no matter what you do, you're going to heaven. I have a new book I'm reading. I don't know if you know anything about it. Uh, it's called The Fifth Miracle by Paul Davies. Uh -huh. Do you have any... I've seen it uh, at the bookstore. I haven't... Uh, what, what it it looks interesting. It, it is kind of interesting. Most of it's based on physics and uh -huh. uh, evolution. And uh, I, I was actually on a chat line, and someone tried to convince me that I was going to be condemned by God for reading this. And I said, well, <laughs> I said, you know, I said, when yeah. was the last time God played golf with you? <laughs> yeah, this wonderful, all-loving God who, who gives you free will and then sentences you to eternal torture if you use that free will to choose to question his existence. And this is the guy whom we're supposed to get our morality from. Yeah, that guy? Yeah. Yeah. Burning you same for same books, guy who. Burning who you for reading books. There should be no same, surprise. Same guy that lets children get hurt. I'm sorry, ma'am? The, the same guy that lets children be hurt by other men or. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, oh, kill some I, I'm yeah. sorry. If there is an omnipotent being, mm. omnipotent, omnipotent and omniscient, so he has no excuse to pretend that he doesn't know what's going on. Mm. <laughs> exactly. He loves you, right? Exactly. And doesn't want anything bad to happen to you? then nothing bad should ever happen to you. Ever. That's true. Anybody loved by that kind of being, nothing bad should ever happen to them. And yeah. if bad things do happen, that being doesn't exist. Well, let's let it's just the, ridiculous. the, the, the so-called believers know, Then we spoke about this last time when I, I came to visit you guys, uh, about the, the wonderful corporations that fire you because of your beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, such that as Southwest Airlines. Um, yeah, there are, uh, well, you know, there are a great many states throughout the, throughout the U.S. in which, uh, 
you know, the, the state constitutions violate the U.S. Constitution by not allowing non-theists to hold public office. Like Texas. And, like Texas, you know, and you, or you have to have a God oath to, uh, you know, do, do various public uh, services. And that's uh, completely in violation of uh, the U.S. Constitution where it says no religious test will be required for these things. So, oh yeah, I mean, it's, it, it goes, uh, you know. It, so is there a way to get out of jury duty because I don't believe in God? Actually, I had jury duty uh, about a month or so ago. They, they'll and give it, you a secular oath yeah. that you can take. They wouldn't give it to me. Yeah, they, they, they actually they blew it off. When I did way. it, when I did it, that the secular affirmation was the affirmation that the judge just gave us. I didn't have to ask for it specifically huh. myself. Probably, probably varies per judge. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah. it probably does. Uh, so we had a, a good judge that day. But um, it, you're right, though. In most cases, you have to, you know, take a God oath if you want to be a witness and get on the stand and take an oath. You have to place your hand upon this thing, which don't uh, they, can't which they is take a secular oath if you're a witness. Oh, well, you probably can. Right, they, they, but it's just, I think that's pretty much take. That's pretty much yeah. uh, allowed. Right. Uh, anyway, here. Uh, thanks for calling, Aurora. We want to see you again. <laughs> we'll be up there. Okay. Yeah, come see us at the first cafeteria. Bye bye. Yeah. Oh, you're first. first? Okay. First, it's uh, we're electing new officers for the group today. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Take care. And we have Warren on line four. Hello, Warren. Hey, how you doing? Good. Good. How are you? Good. Just wanted to tell you that uh, you guys, uh, I'm enjoying the show. Uh, I totally uh, agreed with your points about the book that you were uh, showing and tell these callers to give them 30 seconds to make their point and then get rid of them when well, they're uh, well <laughs> we're, look there are, there are there are many christian shows out there where if you call in and you quest, question them okay you are given no time to speak we try to let the callers make their case and then we respond to their actual points and sometimes that means we go on a little longer than is entertaining but you know there, it is important not in a we see this happening enough in our regular media, okay? Do we really have to, on this show, worry more about entertainment than about actually looking at the issues? Do we really have to do that? I mean, right. we're trying to find a balance. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. well, we understand what you mean, but uh, we, we really want to be here to provide sort of an, both entertainment as well as uh, a bit of education. So, you know, sometimes that you know, involves let, you know, let people talk, let them say their piece, because they have a right to say their piece, and then we'll, you know, uh, give our side of things. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, they're zooming in on my it's, shirt. It's I'm going to substitute the S word with crap. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. But Taoism, crap happens. Mm -hmm. Confucianism, Confucius say crap happens. Hinduism, this crap has happened before. Islam, if crap happens, is the will of Allah. Oh, who are you kidding, Arlo? We can read it. No, oh, you can't? Good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But you can't see the atheism. I don't believe this crap. Yeah. <laughs> but I All think right, this is, is just good advice, plain old good advice, if you want a good advice. Yeah, shirt. let's get, get a shot yeah. of yeah. Uh, Martin Shirt. Uh, anything yeah. else, Warren? Uh, not much. I just, that book, uh, a child's book, even if they're going, even if it's not going to be real, uh, uh, very scientific. It shouldn't just be based on complete garbage. Hey, you know? no, 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 wait a minute. The, 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 I want to make one thing clear. Parents have every right, and I, would, I, I stand behind their right to, tell, to teach their children whatever belief system they want to, okay? That is their right. Don't call it science when it's not science. Mm -hmm. right. Don't put a creationist in a lab coat and call it science. Okay, that's a lie. That is over the that is over the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the that's my point. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Take care, Warren. And we're going to Todd on Todd. two. Hello, Todd. Hi. Hey, let me first say that the suspenders you're wearing are fucking radical. <laughs> <laughs> I like those. You can't more. Uh, language language, Todd. My bad. <laughs> you can't say they're that kind of radical. We can say they're some other kind. My of bad. Radical. Well, you know, I just figured because. If there's no God here to judge me, I can cuss all I want, you know? Well, yeah, but the thing is uh, uh, that uh, God is not the source of morality, like society and uh, the necessity of getting along with each other is. And one of the side effects of that is there are rules for our institutions, and one of them is you can't swear in this show. We have the power to hang up on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad. I, I so, should have opened my mouth. Yeah. There you go. So anyway, what, what do you got for us? Yeah, well, I was just wondering, you know, how can people believe in this so-called God when they have all this carbon-14 dating and things like that? I mean, how can they just totally disguise the evidence that's right there in front of us? 
Well, most of you them know, don't, are ignorant of it. Uh, well, I don't know. Ignorance, even know exactly. what carbon fourteen dating ignorance. is. Nevertheless, argon dating. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the the thing is, it's it is easy to right. just uh, to just just uh, you know ignore anything once you have discovered that oh, it might be wrong. And yeah. the thing about science is, science is honest. Scientists will tell you that any of their theories might be wrong. Okay? Yeah. And so what creationists do is they grab hold of that and they say, well, if it might be wrong, it must be wrong. Yeah, which exactly. Is, which doesn't follow. Yeah. An example, though, of how dishonest they are, though, and you brought up carbon-14 dating. Here, here's an example. In defense of the faith, they will say, scientists really don't know how old those dinosaur fossils are because carbon-14 dating only dates back 50,000 years. They're right. It only dates back 50,000 years. But they don't use carbon-14 dating. They use argon dating. But they don't tell you about that. Yeah. So it's deliberately misleading and deliberately leaving out information. And so people, you know, they hear that once and they think, oh, okay, yeah, I guess scientists don't know what they're talking about. And, yeah. But they I think what, what's, most, uh, uh, what's oh, at the root of it is that you're looking, it's, it's two completely different things. And re religious faith and religious belief is based upon emotional needs that people have. It's not about you know, really learning how things are and then seeking evidence for those things. It's most people gravitate towards belief in religions or belief in the paranormal or ghosts or whatever it is that they latch on to because they have some sort of emotional need in their life that isn't being filled. And I think you can see a lot of this in the way that people refer to God as a father figure, a sort of surrogate parent who's up there watching over you. And, and so when you have something that a lot of people are tying their emotional well-being into, it's not really about evidence or facts for them. It's about what makes them happy and feel good and get through the day, which, you know, if you want to take that on a personal basis, if that's something that makes an individual person happy, fine. But then if you want to try to bring it out into the public sphere and call it science, well then, now what you're doing is you're opening it up, opening it up for the sort of, you know, scrutiny that you, don't really, you didn't really seem to be wanting to open it up for, and then that's when you're going to end up taking those hits to those things that are giving you emotional comfort. So. You know, it's a, it's a tricky thing, but it, it's that's that's a what's it the root of the difference between science and religion is that religion is really about what makes unhappy people happy. Yeah. So and that's it's true. not about. You but, know, but don't real you think you could also honest. make like for a good role model like for some people? I mean, even though you and I might not believe in it, like don't you think it can be like a good thing for people to try to achieve to like live their life in a better sense? Well, well I I think that. I, let me, let me is it that bad to like put like you know Christ as like a role model? I mean, I, I think that if you look at the way that many Christians actually behave, well, that's not Christians. I'm questionable. saying period. I mean, just to have some kind of some kind of really good role model for you to try to set your life at. Well, good role models and, are good things to th have. No, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing is, if you if if the role model was this sort of candy coated modern version of Christianity, then you might have a point. You know, you take really liberal modern theology, where uh, where you know they've softened everything. That might be the source of a good role model. As soon as you go back to the you know fire and brimstone fundamentalists, we're not talking about good role models anymore. We're talking about we're talking about you know the role model is this entity that that will burn you in hell forever for not believing in him. And that I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there, there's uh, something that, ethically that wrong. That book y'all were talking about earlier. Uh, what, what was the name of that book again? Uh, which book? Oh, the God made God oh, made this, this yeah. little thing. Yeah, that one. Yeah, what's God. the name of that? God made outer space. I yeah, think. Yeah, God made outer space. <laughs> Man, it contradicts what, itself. What reading level pages. is that? You what? What reading level is that? Um, it doesn't. S <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> see, it doesn't I mean, matter. Is this a textbook at like Christian you University? So I don't understand the argument <laughs> that it doesn't say. Oh, they're explaining it, you argue. know, simply to be simple. But if it's simply wrong, like yeah. the Bible itself, you know, I don't care how long ago it was. The Bible. Well, a lot of stories are wrong. The Bible prophesizes that all the stars are going to fall to Earth. <laughs> no matter how you explain <laughs> you, it, that's in Revelation that nine one, by the way. And, and, it's, it's, and every reference to the shape of the Earth implies that it's flat. Every reference. There's four major references in there. They all imply yeah. that it's a flat Earth. And I can... Yeah. yeah. Anyway. those up if you don't believe me. So... Let's, we got to move on, Todd. Thanks for calling, man. Take care. Thank you so uh, thank you for awesome. Okay. okay. Let's go to... Kevin on three. Kevin! How do you? Hi, Kevin. Morning. I am um, just kind of wondering about atheists in general. Um, 
Uh, hang, hang on just a second. We're having that trouble again here. With yeah, we the, can't with hear the you very well. All right, I'll, I'll try and speak oh, up. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right, great. Go ahead. Um, I was just wondering, do you find if atheists were at, brought up in, in a religious-type community, or were they people who were brought up outside of the religious community? It varies. Total mix. It varies. Very mixed. Yeah, there's, there's no majority one way or the other. Well, there, the the majority of them were raised in religious households, but I think that's only because the majority of households in the United States are religious. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, I just think I think uh, skepticism comes out of being brought up in a religion, if in, you will. In some you know, cases, yeah, I'm kind of pushes you in that people, direction. I, huh? It kind of pushes you in that direction. I, I am constantly amazed at the number of people who tell me that they're ex-Catholics or that Catholic school did it <laughs> did it for them. Right, right. I I was brought up Catholic. I yeah. I'll say I am a Catholic. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just um, it kind of shunned me away when I was young, but uh, recently I just started going back to church, and you know, okay. I don't know. Just going to be uh, to celebrate love is what I find religion as now. Yeah, you what know. Do you think religion does, huh? Well, I think religion today should be more of a just getting together and hey, saying hey, we all love each other and we need to get together and you know. That's that's what us atheists do. Right, yeah. and you know, and that's what I'm trying to 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 get out of you here, and you know, people yeah. don't understand that about you is what I, I'm afraid, you know. That you That's really are just trying to. Um, I don't understand that. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just the right thing to do. Right. It's just the right it thing. You're just trying to religion, spread but it can be brotherly religion. love and let's work through this whole world together and get it all yeah. straight. You know. Yeah. Uh, I I would call that humanism. Right. Humanism. Exactly. You know. Of, of course, our concern about religion is not, um, you know, that it provides a, a a venue for people to get together and uh, and express their love for one another and socialize. I mean that that's perfectly fine. We right. do that ourselves. Right. Our concern about religion is that in it, it that in order to get that activity to happen, it spins a bunch of tales that are just flat out false. Okay. That's our that's our concern. I don't think the price for socializing and expressing your love for other people should be believing in a lie together. Right. That's my concern about it. And kind of getting back to this last caller talking about role models. Uh huh. Basically, that's what I feel. Jesus or whatever, you know, that's that's what it is all about. You know, he was yeah. a role model, and yeah, I think so. Huh? Well, I mean, he basically preached or taught, you know, love one another. That right. seems like what a good the, thing to me. All the gospels. Yeah. What about the part where he says, "Take the people that don't that don't uh, follow me and slay them in front of me with a sword"? I don't think Jesus actually said that. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> so <laughs> you pick and choose, and that's exactly no, no, no. What I'm, I'm not saying. picking and choosing. I, I agree. I agree. If you take a modern candy-coated, uh, you know, stripped-down version of Christianity, just the good bits. Right. I think you can probably get a pretty good role model out of that. But there's a lot of brands of Christianity that, that, that haven't trimmed out the bad parts. Yeah. Uh, sir, I've got the quote right here. Uh, Luke 19.27. Uh, he's not denying it. It's in there. No, well, oh. he said, I don't think Jesus said that, and so I'm going to read it. But those mine enemies, well, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's Luke 19.27. You're saying the Bible got it wrong, is that correct? Um, I wouldn't say the Bible got it wrong. Maybe the revisions of the Bible got it wrong. <laughs> see, well. see, there's, there's, n there's no way that you'll be willing to accept that Jesus could have said a bad thing. Maybe all that lovingness it's was accidentally added in there. What's that? Yeah, I mean, maybe you know, maybe he was an all-out, you know, Nazi, and and all the lovingness and good things were were misleadingly added in there. Who knows which is which? Mm -hmm. You're already. It sounds like you're already a moral person. You can distinct right from wrong, so you don't need the moral guide. Right. I, I don't look to the Bible for. Um, for the answers to my questions, I guess I look everywhere else but the Bible. You know, mm -hmm. right? Well, great. It, you know, it's it's about uh, taking the Bible as just one of the references in your, mm -hmm. you know, in your entourage of knowledge. I guess you know. Huh. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks Thank for your call. Well, thanks. Was that Kevin on three? You were just talking to. That was okay. Okay. And now let's go to Bobby on two. Bobby. Hi. Uh, Hi, Bobby. Hi. Morning. Uh, just a couple of minutes, or a few minutes ago, uh, the guy on the far left, um, he said the, uh, there were four references uh, throughout the Bible uh, about the earth being flat. Uh, oh, yeah, did you, did I you just wanted to um, see if he could give me those four references. Yeah, and, um, there's uh, this one. All he has to do is just give me the, the books and the right chapters and verses, and I can look uh, them yeah. up on my own. That's fine. Okay, here we go. Okay, my favorite one is... Um, 
Well, the Bible has many references to a bottomless pits, for instance, in Revelation. A bottomless pit on earth will open up. That, that, that doesn't imply the earth is a sphere. Um, angels on the four corners of the earth. Sure, that could be interpreted poetically, but... You know, to use but the there Bible are as science. Four corners does not sound like a sphere either. There are oh. flat earthers to this day who use the four corners of the earth biblical quote as the mm -hmm. basis for their belief that the earth right. today is as flat as a pool table, even though we have have mapped it pretty thoroughly. <laughs> 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 Photos. Yeah. <laughs> this is and and that that was uh, Revelation seven one. And there's an interesting one in Ma in the book of Matthew chapter four verse eight. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world in glory <laughs> of them. To go on a mountain so high to see all the kingdoms of the world cannot be done once again on a sphere. It's impossible. That implies a flat earth to see all the kingdoms. You know, of course, in reality, the only kingdoms, you know, they knew of, you know, one might argue, were the ones in that small area. But, I mean, this is supposed to be God. If it says all the kingdoms, it should mean all the kingdoms. Right. And there were kingdoms going on at the time that they didn't know about. There's a strange one in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretched out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, which doesn't sound like a sphere at all. And also in <laughs> Psalms, I, I don't have it, I don't have the chapter and verse on here. In Psalms, it talks about how the earth is set upon pillars. So there's more than four, but, and I'm sure there's more. That's just of what I've read personally. I won't take a quote unless I've actually read the entire chapter or the entire segment, the, the book of the many books in the Bible. And I'm sure there's more in there. But Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Thanks right. for calling. Sometimes you I know, think they think I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting really quickly to the issue of role models. Yeah. Okay. You know, my father's my role model. You know, good man, successful man, you know. Has his flaws like any human being, but you know, look to your own lives. Don't look to the skies or to the big pie in the sky for your role model. I mean, it, it just it saddens me to when I hear religious people, you know, looking to these sort of otherworldly supernatural sources for the role models in which to live their lives. It's like, do you honestly mean to say that there's no one whom you know and love in your own life, you know, that is that's your personal hero, someone who whom you look to as a role model? Yeah, to to live your life, and if if that's if the answer is no to that, I would find that very sad. I don't even have a problem with using fictitious characters as role models, oh, as long that. as you don't make the mistake of thinking that your <laughs> fictitious role model is a real guy. Yeah, you know, Spider Man. It's a big role model for me. With great <laughs> power comes great responsibility. That <laughs> that 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 uh, you know, Spider Man catchphrase uh -huh. was instrumental to me in getting me to like take a good hard look at this god and you know what he was supposed to be all the power he was supposed to have and all the responsibility he ought to have and what a capricious creep he was <laughs> given the stories from his own believers mm -hmm. um, but, you're not, but you're I don't think Spider-Man exists. No, well, but that's a not. But that's a good perspective. With great power mm. comes great responsibility. You know. um, boy, the lines are lit up, but I don't have any names yet. I guess yeah. they're... We'll get to you folks. Yeah. Uh, why don't you... You got something else prepared there? Something I short? You can, have no oh, idea gosh. why I'm holding this. And so, wait. Oh, sorry, I'm not... We have a lecturer. We do have uh, Howard. We have, Howard Thompson will be Howard our lecturer Thompson. today. Mm. So you okay. can go ahead and just spill your guts here mm. in the show. Okay. I enjoy going through various Christian shops. I'm not going to say which one, but uh, I want to show... <laughs> I, I love the levels people sink to to <laughs> spread the word. <laughs> we have a... Uh, like a uh, you yeah. wouldn't believe how much money I actually spend at Christian shops. I'm a bizarre <laughs> atheist, but uh, <laughs> you know, you know, a Taco Bell commercial. Oh, these are not things made up by atheists to make fun of Christians. Yeah. These it's, are actual Christian products. It's not all. It's not all Christian. I mean, I have so, a, you know, I have a ticket there's to some good uh, money to be made pandering to Christians. Well, Does yeah. anybody know there's a Scientology movie theater at their head center? It's an actual theater. I've been in there with oh, seats and everything, and a big screen. And John Travolta yells oh. at you, and Katie Alley Should cries. I tell the folks on the line? I got the Jesus action figure. All right. And I actually, Whoa, it actually says what's in a the kung receipt. fu grip. And he has kung fu grip. Check it out. He's busting out with the loaves. And oh, it's got the <laughs> loaves and fishes. It says five <laughs> loaves and two fishes included. Which is false advertising. There's one loaf, but. There you go. It doesn't come with the sword, though, that protrudes out his mouth as spoken yeah. in Revelation. <laughs> he doesn't have bronze feet, either. Yeah, yeah read Revelations yeah. if you want to find out more about the character of Jesus. He's a... <laughs> yeah, what a role model. Do to Chucky and for check not for this children out. Free. Tickets to heaven. I bought Whoa. tickets to heaven. Uh, You're kidding. They sell tickets to heaven 15 cents. 
Isn't that great? That's uh. I just got mine from a scalper for like 400 bucks. Oh. <laughs> they get you that way? Boy. Oh, that burns me. All right. Uh, 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 we're okay, we're getting word that the <laughs> phone system is broken. Oh, we're and, sorry, uh, folks. Uh, I don't know whether those of you already on the line are supposed to wait or what. Um, but uh, try hanging on. Fix it. Try hanging on, and we'll let you know if you need. If to we hang can up. get to you in the next six minutes, we will. But or uh, maybe there's nobody there, and what's broken is it says all the lines are falling. How many flavors of testaments Our do they favorite. have now? Oh boy, testaments come in two new flavors now. <laughs> See, get it. <laughs> <laughs> Testament, get it? There's a cross on each one. I love it. Uh -huh. yeah, they're, they're, they're really quite good. good. And what's interesting about the crosses on the mints is that they're actually like inverted, not upside down, but <laughs> like pressed into the mint rather oh, they're, than sticking out from the mint. So they're debossed instead of embossed. They are concave rather concave. than convex. Uh -huh. And uh, I hate it when mean, my mints are convex. That's gotta mean something. Yeah. I got the God is good raspberry truffle. <laughs> 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 no, you actually had it. Parties. I know you've had the testaments. Yeah, we. Oh, yeah. I've tried those myself. The testaments what are about okay. The, the raspberry uh, truffles. The God is good raspberry truffles. It's a. I can. It's. I cherish it. It's a collector's item. I'm not going to eat it. But okay. <laughs> oh, Remember, okay. we are not. We are not oh, promoting not these products. No, we're no <laughs> way. The kind of things you can find there. Yeah, it's just my uh, own personal masochism. I just. Uh, so do they know that you're this atheist sneaking into their store and, and buying their stuff? No, they don't. But they I usually make fun comments to the clerks. Speaking of. Speaking of hypocritical propaganda, uh, Christian propaganda. Okay. Pardon me? Phones are good? Phones are good. All right, we're going to start getting the names. We'll go to calls in just a second here. Yeah, There's the that. big Jesus miniseries coming up. Boy, it may have even started as far as I know. He finally made it um, on TV Guide. And uh, it's just uh, the, 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 the article here is kind of funny about how you know, they picked this. They pick this guy to be Jesus, and uh, they, he's a he's Jesus without any baggage. They say because because <laughs> apparently he's never played a. a I still I still before. want uh, oh, I Paul Verhoeven to do his Jesus movie. With who? Paul Verhoeven. I still want oh. him to do his Jesus movie. Well, we'll see. Uh, I, I so want yeah. Mary Magdalene to do a lap dance for Jesus. So, uh, so get, there's this quote here at the end from uh, that that I like. I particularly like. Still, I think this is going to raise a few eyebrows. Predicts Oldman. They just they got, just got through talking about how they they uh, they screened the script with a bunch of Christian theologians to make sure it was okay. <laughs> um, still, I think this this is going to raise a few eyebrows. Predicts Oldman during a shooting break. There is. No ambiguity in this script about who really killed Christ. At the end, when Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, one of the Romans says, We know exactly what we're doing, Messiah. <laughs> it, doesn't get, it doesn't get more on the money than that. <laughs> <laughs> and money is what it's all about. Oh, four boy. minutes, we're going to go to Barbara on three, I believe. In four minutes? Well, <laughs> let's do it. Oh, you mean remaining. Okay. On the show, yeah. <laughs> let's no. go to... Three minutes now. Barbara, hi. Hello. Oh, well, I didn't get her. Barbara? Hello? Hi, morning, Barbara. Uh, what can we do for you? Hi. Um, I was wondering, what out of Luke, what, what book and what verse did you guys read claiming that my Jesus is a slayer, that he ah, would execute? Oh, oh it's, it's in um, all the Bible. Okay, it's... <laughs> <laughs> He'll look it up, and well, we'll, read uh, it. we'll read the quote, in, uh, chapter and verse, to you, uh, no, you on the air, okay? We're going to go into another call. No, no, no. But read, read Revelations, too. He says he'll kill the children of whores. He comes no, with a, a no. bloody cloak with a whole army of soldiers and uh, okay. sends scorpions. All right, we'll, we'll read that on the air. Thanks for your call. We're running out of time here, and we want to try to get the callers in. We still mm -hmm. got Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Hi, what's up? I'm calling about the Jesus action figure. Uh, we need, uh, I'm we, sorry, yeah, we can't hear you. The volume I'm calling is about the, can't hear her. I'm calling about the Jesus action figure. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering what other claims it says that it will do and where I can get one. Oh, well, that, that, would, be ad, that would be advertising, but I got the last one anyway. Oh, you did? There's so, other ones. There's a David and Goliath. I think it actually shoots rocks. What well, does Jesus the, levitate? The, wait. <laughs> we don't have the packaging with us, but they have the stuff at Christian stores. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to go into one of those creepy places, I, I think I will. They have a wide variety of interesting products. Okay, he might walk on water. I'll try one. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your call. Phone like it's, uh, and chapter and verse. Go ahead. Okay. Now this is from Luke chapter 19, and now just you know, because I know Christians are going to jump to the defense here. It, 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 go, just go read. Okay. Read well, the whole verse. the whole thing runs from 12 to 27, but it, and it is a parable. Okay. Jesus is telling a parable. Okay, so the, the main character in this parable is a, who, a nobleman who goes to a country, yeah. does some stuff, comes back, and the guys who are supposed to be his friends, some of them, like, you know, stayed on his side and some others betrayed him. 
Okay, but you have to remember why Jesus told parables. They were like metaphors and lessons for people to tell them this is what you should do. And it's very clear that Jesus considers himself analogous to the nobleman in this story. Right. So and either. it wraps up in Luke 19, 27 by saying, okay, the, oh, 26, for I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even though well, that, that makes no sense. The, the point is, Luke 19, 27, but those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Right, there so we are. So either, that is and, Jesus wrapping up And Barbara's up back to, to yell at us about that, but we don't have time because mm -hmm. we have 30 seconds in the show, but call us next Sunday, Barbara. Either, either Jesus is wrapping up his parable by saying, that's the way you should res respect me, or he is saying, here's this nobleman, and he is showing you how things are done. If you don't follow the nobleman, the lord that you're supposed to be following, then you get slayed with a sword. Okay, folks. Christians. Uh, thanks for calling. Christians, we, we don't, don't hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. See you next Sunday, same time, 9 a.m. Bye. Bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Good show. Yeah. That was fun.